Avatar has been getting a lot of press lately, both in terms of repeated ticket sales and huge opening figures, as well as uh, some good press regarding how the film is, uh, shows messages of hope, and other some press that says it's an anti-American film. There's all sorts of stuff, and so I went and saw it. And uh, the movie was, as movies go, um, all right. Uh, I happen to like the comic book fantasy sci-fi genre a lot, and so when I go see the Wolverine movie, I know exactly what I'm going to get, and it's uh, m more unrealistically violent than the real world, and it is what it is, and I come out with my expectations kind of meeting it. Well, given all the press that Avatar's been getting, uh, I think I thought I was getting into a film that was going to be artistic and tasteful and have all, go all sorts of good things to say in terms of hope and the human spirit. Well, what I actually saw was something that was a pretty good movie, but it was actually very, very concerning to me uh, as a theologian, as a kind of a theologian thinker, because of what the movie was putting forth kind of implicitly, the assumptions that the film was putting out. And in this day and age, when our uh, common allegorical um, narrative is not in poetry or in the epic poem or songs and quite frankly the sermons that we hear in our congregations don't really have as much staying power and as much kind of um, conversation out in the public and populace as do films and television I think it's important when something captures the, the populace or the public mindset so incredibly as has Avatar as evidenced through those repeated ticket sales it's important for us to consider what it is that that media is putting out into the world and so there are two pieces of that film Avatar which are troubling to me. Um, the first is that um, James Cameron, who has made this film kind of and has said explicitly that it's a kind of pro-environmentalism film and he needs people to wake up and see that we're not going to be able to have a sustainable planet if we continue the way we've been doing. Certainly a, a noble message. I think that that's great. Has in fact put that message and paired it up um, with uh, the myth of redemptive violence, which is what Walter Wink calls the idea that by punishing the bad guy, somehow um, the, 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 the sinful nature of it or the bad things that have happened are redeemed. You know, this is very much a cartoony kind of idea. Um, the bad guy gets punished and therefore everyone's okay. But it doesn't actually consider any sense of reconciliation and it's not a sustainable thing because then what happens when the bad guy who's been defeated then comes to re 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 um, kind of vengeance on you. Well, this serial cycle is great for comic books because then the bad guy comes and the good guy comes back and then the bad guy comes and defeats the bad guy and the bad guy comes back. But in our life, it brings an enormous amount of sorrow and pain and suffering. And so it's interesting that he's paired this idea of environmentalism and the necessity to develop some kind of sustainable and non-overly consumptive systems with this idea of retributive violence because it seems as if those two things don't work too well together. So. You know, in the movie, um, the good guys are the guys who are uh, kind of these nature, spirituality folks, and the bad guys are the capitalist humans who are trying to destroy them and their way of life for the sake of profit. Now, I'm not a pro destroying ways of life and cultures for the sake of profit. However, I don't think that portraying the way to overcome that through a kind of a bloody revolt and the destruction of um, the people who are trying to make a profit is the kind of message to send forward. What do you do with that? So the question to James Cameron would be, if you're trying to kind of instill the message of environmentalism, but just as much time on screen is spent with the idea that the way that you encourage these beliefs is to destroy the people who disagree with you, well then where are we going to get with that? So it's concerning to me that that's out there. I don't think that people are going to be starting uh, anti-capitalist revolutions anywhere. I don't think that this film is explicitly Marxist, but you know, I, I just don't understand how that's, that's going to help, and it's concerning because it once again reinforces this myth of retributive violence. The second piece of the film, Avatar, that is concerning to me um, is a little bit more explicitly theological as opposed to ethical. And what happens at the end of the movie is that there's this big rebellion and these kind of native um, earth religion people have done all their best to try and get the bad capitalist guys off the planet and, and their best has failed. And as a result, uh, the prayers that they have issued to their um, biological uh, deity-like figure have been answered. And the previously unseen uh, life force, that is their kind of Gaia mother figure, responds to their prayers with hordes of rhinoceros kinds of creatures and pterodactyl creatures and little like hyena guys that uh, attack uh, in throngs and eventually help to drive the evil capitalist humans off the planet and away. And that's also concerning to me um, because it suggests 
that uh, somewhere um, we will have this miraculous thing where our efforts are, are simply um, the precursor to some divine uh, in injection and interjection and we will in fact not be the deciders of it, but that uh, some other physical force. Now, I happen to be much more uh, of a thinker along the lines of process theology, and um, I certainly believe in the power and expression of the creativity of the Holy Spirit, and as an experiential thing that I have, I, I believe I have, uh, can bear witness to as a, as a testament in my own life. However, the idea that somehow something wholly other than human process will intercede and save save humans um, in a physical way and then life will continue on as it was before simply just better with all of the bad guys gone um, is not something I'm really sure I can go with because then it puts off the idea that we actually need to engage and do anything ourselves it's the idea then well, that we will be passive and simply just need to follow the rules um, in a small way and not challenge uh, the kind of oppressive uh, destructive things and uh, the world will be saved by some external force that is beyond us. Now the salvific force of, of God is certainly something I believe in. However in the film it's suggested that um, what we do in this physical tangential world will not be enough and that God will need to physically intercede in this world to make things better. Now I don't know about the eschaton and the life after and I'm not particularly concerned about that right now. I do think we need to be living in a way that is uh, moral and virtuous and uh, just and, and that involves uh, making sure that we have communities of support and that people are not in an overconsumptive model where goodness is associated with how much you can accumulate. And I think that while we are living, it is in fact upon us as the people living who are conscious and are aware of our surroundings to do what we can to form communities of response and uh, reaction and connection. And if we simply say, you know, uh, well, in the end, it will simply be the intercession of some divine force which is entirely outside of our control, well, that takes the power out of our hands. And really, I think we need to be considering how to be creative with the power that's in our hands. The willfulness that we do have as, as living creatures who are able to make choices needs to be tapped into so that we can enact change in the world. And maybe I'm painting with too fine a brush when Avatar is painting with a giant brush, but that film, to me at least, seemed to suggest that, you know, the way forward is to destroy the bad guys, everything will be okay, and that destruction of the bad guys will be supported by some divine intercession, which will clear away all the riffraff, and then physical life will continue on as before, better before the bad guys came. And I don't know if I can uh, buy into that. It's, it's sketchy at best, and I think it promotes a way of thinking which doesn't actually help us who are actually living still today where there is oppression and there is poverty and people are not doing things about helping uh, the least of these. And uh, I just, I wonder and shrug kind of a little sadly that such a film is getting an enormous amount of press. And I, I hope it doesn't do too much damage. And if it doesn't, that's awesome. And if people are just enjoying it as a film, great. However, given how much press it's been getting and the effect that films have on people as their major narrative uh, communicator, well, it says some things I wish it didn't.